uh, political panel for today. Uh, and I'm going to I'm very excited. Uh, very excited. Uh, Laurie McFarlane, contributing editor at Open Democracy. How are you, Laurie? Welcome to the show. I'm very well. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is a first. It is indeed. A very plain background. It's, a, it's always like a photo fit for a minute there, Laurie. Are you all right? Yeah, not too bad. We just moved house recently, so the, the walls are still looking quite bare, Put the pictures up, Laurie. Come on, we need some pictures up. But thank you for coming on. And Lettuce, political commentator. Letty, Lettuce, help me out. How do I say your, your second name? Hello, Jeremy. It's actually Bromowski. So, do yeah, you Lettuce have Bromowski. a sense of humour, Lettuce? I do, definitely. But I'm sure I've heard all the jokes you're about to say before. Because, <laughs> no, because I want to know if you're a Remainer. If I'm... Never mind. I am... <laughs> Rubbish. He didn't even laugh either, right, Laurie. It doesn't matter. Thank you very much, Steve. <laughs> right, guys, listen. Um, loads and loads of things going on in the news. Um, I'm going to start with the migrant crisis because, let's be perfectly honest, everybody has quite rightly been talking about this for the last 24 hours uh, and for longer. Uh, I've made my position quite clear as I have uh, listened to other people's as well. I think from a humanitarian point of view, there should not be anybody in the world that wants to see that. I get, because I've spoken to Amnesty International and First Rescue, that we have a responsibility. But I think the whole world has a responsibility. And you will not convince me or the British people in their majority that it does always seem to come down on us. And I have all the facts and I have all the figures. Is not the answer, Laurie, that the whole world has to get together to find a solution to this horrible problem? That's absolutely right. It's a global problem, but I think Britain has an important role to play. And I think what's happened this week has been absolutely horrific and tragic, but sadly, uh, it was uh, predictable. Uh, and really, it, if it comes down to whose responsibility it is, uh, I think we do need to be looking squarely at government here, both in the UK and France, because this has been warned that it would happen because of the policy stances that we've chosen to take. You know, the root cause here is the border policy that we have decided to uh, to impose, the lack of safe routes of travel. Obviously, no one should have any sympathy for the smugglers here who are no. criminal Awful. crooks who, who are just exploiting desperate people here. But they are filling that vacuum because it's been created by the lack of safe passage by our own policies. And so, you know, nobody can look at this and, and think that, that, that we want to see this continue to happen. It's an absolute tragedy, but it is within our gift. And if we are as compassionate as we say we are in Britain, then I think we should be much more welcoming here. We're really not doing enough, particularly when we look at our neighbours in terms of welcoming asylum But, but, but Laurie, the issue is, and I've said this to everybody who would disagree, and, 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 I, and I hope I put it in a way that is respectable, because I don't want to see that any more than you want to see that. But the British people, whether you like this or not, are, again, for the 83rd time today, struggling, they were struggling before the pandemic, they're struggling after the pandemic, to do the normal everyday things like pay their mortgages, uh, queue for operations, get their kids into schools. And whether, whether the humanitarian left like this or not, right, and I'm being totally straight with you, most people now will go, I'm sorry, charity has to begin at home. Lettuce, where do you stand on this? It's a difficult one. It is a difficult one, um, but I definitely want to th go back to what Laurie was saying quickly on the fact that it's both the British and France's um, to blame for this. And I think that a significant proportion of this blame um, has fallen on France. We can't forget that just this week alone, they rejected a British offer um, to help patrol the shores so that these migrants wouldn't even be getting into these boats. Um, and then we also see videos of French authorities completely allowing these migrants to get into a boat and leave the, their shores. Um, and then hours later, uh, one of these migrant boats capsizes and we have uh, these poor migrants, 27 of them die. Um, and so there's a significant portion of the blame does fall to France on this particular issue. Do you think, Laurie, that France, specifically Macron, is, is, is on payback duty because of Brexit? Serious question. I don't think so. I, I don't think that, that, that there's that level of sort of cynical politics at play here. I, I think I agree both governments really need to get around the table and, and get the rack together because the reality is if nothing does changes, this will continue to keep Absolutely happening. Absolutely right, pal. And I'd also just take a little bit of an issue there with the way that you framed that uh, there, Jeremy, about this is about charity. Uh, you know, the way that we frame uh, these migrants, uh, you know, as migrants rather than as people like you arrive with family who just want what we all want, security, uh, you know, Laurie, safety, I don't, I, Laurie, I don't disagree with you. I absolutely agree. But you, but, but I'm afraid 
there are people who will not answer what I know the people listening to this radio station will want to ask you, which is what I'm trying to do, which is as follows. That's not my quote. That will be quotes all over. the. That, that, I'll get hundreds of text messages saying, I'm really sorry. I don't like to see that, but I'm struggling to keep myself afloat. Charity has to begin at home. You don't like how I phrase that, but that is how many people, however wrong you might see that feel. And I just think we're going to get to a point where we're going to have two diametrically opposed opinions and these poor people in the middle are going to be completely manipulated by these illegal smugglers going from place to place. People will send me messages, Laurie, and they'll say, we're an island, we're much smaller than France and Germany. Let me give you this, Laurie, as well, which somebody told me earlier, which is very true. In Great Britain, we take four times less than France, fact. We give them less benefits than France, fact. But in Calais, you live in a windswept tent, Right? So why, why don't the French improve the way they look? If that, why, why are we not talking about their lack of humanitarianism? I guess the feeling is, but maybe we're only talking from this country's point of view, it always seems to come to us. Now, somebody came on and talked about language. They talked about, you know, somebody said to me, I say, well, we went to their country and took everything from them. It was ridiculous, ridiculous. We should do our bit, just feel like the onus, as do a lot of listeners, is always on the United Kingdom. And that's my issue, really. I don't think it does always fall to us, though. I mean, this is a global problem. If you look across Europe, you know, we can easily pass the buck, say, oh, it should be France or Germany or Italy or Greece. You know, this is a, this is a problem that's, that's across Europe. And the reality is that we need to be playing our part. And we're not. We're, we're instead of being part of the solution, we're being part of the problem. Here. How? How? Because, How? Because our, because our policy, which doesn't allow safe passage, is opening up space for these smugglers to operate, which is allowing these tragedies to happen. Mm -hmm. We could stop that. We could stop it tomorrow. But we choose not to, and therefore we're continuing to choose to allow this to happen. Nobody's saying we should just have completely open borders that everyone should come in. Of course not. But we need to have doing much more that we can, much more than we are doing today, to make sure that these types of tragedies don't continue to happen. And as we've, as you already said, you pointed out, compared to some of our neighbours, you know, it's not passing the buck. We're just not doing anywhere near enough. I guess we'll get to agree, disagree on that one. But everybody is entitled. I just hope, like you, Laurie, that that they get their heads together and get this sorted for those people. Uh, the COVID situation in Europe is 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 incredibly bad. Uh, Austria going back to a lockdown, uh, rumours of Germany the same, mandatory COVID vaccinations, maybe passports. What do you both think of the situation in this country? Because in this, in this sort of month-long bash Boris, quite rightly, I might add, um, Everybody seems to be missing a large point. We're doing quite well. I had my booster this morning, my choice. I don't mind talking about that. What, what's your opinion on, on, on COVID as a sort of going forward where we're at, let us? Well, I think we're actually in a pretty good position, particularly compared to many, many cities uh, or countries within Europe. Um, are, we are seeing decreased um, in, uh people going into hospitals, sorry. Um, we're not seeing the same protests that we're seeing across cities in Europe. Uh, just in Rotterdam, they were turning water cannons on people. Yeah, I mean, it's outrageous. It's turning into a complete totalitarian system out there. And anyone who mentions anything to do with mandatory vaccines, I think is absolutely outrageous and how you can't see the immorality of this. You know, forcing a medical procedure on someone is outrageous. Medics are trained so that under oath, they will never do medical procedures on people without their consent. Um, and I think Europe in particular is it's lost the plot and it's definitely forgotten its very recent history. So, Laurie, to be fair, you're going to love this question. Boris has got this right, hasn't he? Well, when it comes to vaccines, I mean, if you look at the performance of the UK throughout the course of the, the whole pandemic, clearly our deaths have been completely unacceptable, far higher than many, many other countries, indeed one of the highest in the world. And so looking at the big picture, I think it's a bit early to be uh, congratulating the Prime Minister for his performance, which has been shambolic. When it comes to vaccines, however, it's true. You know, we were, we've, we've been lucky that we've had uh, a vaccine developed in the UK, thanks in part to our, our, our great research universities with the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. Uh, and we've managed to get that, roll that out. And, and thankfully, you know, we don't have as much Although it is a problem here in terms of people resisting the vaccine, it isn't as much as a problem as it seems to be in other parts of the continent. And of course, we do want to see vaccination rates continue to go up. That's the only yeah. way out of the pandemic. But I agree. I mean, personally, I am uncomfortable with the idea of making vaccines legally compulsory. Because and apart from anything else, we talk about criminalising people. Uh, you know, that I don't like that uh, from a civil liberties perspective, but also just don't think it works. It may actually cause a backlash by increasing mistrust, resentment uh, towards the government and mm. actually making 
thing even worse. And so I think there are other things that countries can be doing to get that vaccination rate up, challenge misinformation and conspiracies online, reaching out to communities where vaccination rates are low, doing a lot more. But I, I also would stop short of making it legally mandatory because I think that's problematic. I always think about, you know, the vibe you get in the country and just talking to people and listening to people. It's pretty obvious that the main vibe now is we've got to live with this. We've got to get on with our lives. We've got to we've got to we've got yeah. to rebuild our careers, our businesses, our homes, our communities, whatever. And I think genuinely I think, that's that's across the country, don't you? Yeah, I think there's also a very another um, important point to be made here that vaccines shouldn't be heralded as this saving grace for all of us. Even if you get the vaccine or the double vaccination or even the booster, as you said, you got earlier, Jeremy, um, it doesn't stop your capacity to contract the virus and spread the virus. No. Um, and so there's that that people need to remember. And it's not a saving grace in the sense that it will protect everyone. It won't be. It's not a saving grace disappear. in that it's protected everyone, but it's definitely, definitely made a difference. Guys, very quickly, one minute, 30 seconds each. Don't look at me like that, Dave. This is the Jeremy Carl drive show. You can do one. Benedict Cumberbatch, does the UK have a toxic masculinity problem? Laurie McFarlane. <laughs> Well, I think it's right in, in the sense that, you know, we've had a very male dominated world for a long time. There's been progress made, but clearly whether it's things like the Me Too movement or just the sexism that many women uh, experience every day shows that we've still got a long way to go. One thing I would like to highlight, though, which I think is one of the most astonishing statistics that we have, is that the main cause of death for men under the age of 45 today uh, is suicide. And I think a large part of that is down to this sort of cultural inability for men, many men feel to talk openly about their, their problems. Yeah, uh, agree with to talk that, about mate. Artistic health. Uh, and, and I think that that, that macho does, again, bull. come back to this. Yeah, mm. exactly. The, that, that macho mindset that still prevails and, and people feel they've got no other way out. Way out. And so I think we've got a long way to go before we can say the UK doesn't have a problem with toxic masculinity. 30 seconds. Uh, lettuce, what would you say? I think that the main thing that jumps out to me about this story is why is Benedict Cumberbatch, a white privileged man, trying to tell everyone to listen to women? Why are we listening to celebrities in this way? Um, what he actually said in the quote was, shut up and listen to women. That, that's not the way to be going about this, whether there's a toxic masculinity problem or not. What we really want to be coming to is more of an equality between what men or women have to say on this issue. So. Um, I think that it, this is a classic celebrity move to try and stay on trend. Lettuce, Laurie, I appreciate you being on. Thank you for being today's uh, political panel. My initial joke to Lettuce, because you might be a Romana, went down like a, a damp lettuce, didn't it? 520. Online, on DAB and on the Talk Radio app. Talk Radio.